In this video, we're gonna take a look at a brown ink by Sailor Riku Cha. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to all of the brown inks here on the channel in a playlist. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. Let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade very well. Look at the going light to dark to darker. Quick goes lighter to dark. Brown is a nice uniform tone where fox goes lighter to darker. The is very dark compared to everything around it, and lazy goes dark to light. 12 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, a little bit lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and very nice shading as quick goes dark, a little bit lighter, very dark. Brown goes darker to lighter. 17 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show some good color variation. I'm hoping the medium shows up on camera. We get it in the writing. The smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Noodler's Nib Creeper was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. Let's take a look at the second writing sample done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 19 seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not quite as dark as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 24 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both shows us no color variation, and we were not expecting it. In the smear test, I don't think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this very light blue really uniformly pushing its way up, and then we get this greenish tone at the bottom of the brown. And that's where it starts to get interesting. Because the one on the right that we let dry for 10 minutes before putting it into water, we see that a lot of that blue from the first chromatography is really in a line on the bottom, giving an idea that that might be more of a permanent aspect of this ink. It lightly pushes up, but then that's where things get cool because we see this orange tone underneath that brown that's there. And at the very top, if you look carefully across the top of a line, you see this very bright turquoise. This is a complex ink that you should expect some good shading looking at the chromatography and you might expect some resistance based on that. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, and some spots of shading like the K in quick is darker, the B in brown. Brown goes darker to lighter to darker. We're talking B to N. The is very dark compared to what's around it, where over goes light to dark. 14 seconds to dry. Now medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, not very much shading, 18 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both don't show a lot of color variation, though in the extra fine it does show itself in the writing. The smear test says you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, this is a very safe ink to use in a note-taking situation because it barely noticed being highlighted. Pretty good. I mean, there is a little bit of fuzziness on the lowercase h, but really, very nice. Water is reactivating, lifting everything except that blue that we saw at the bottom of the chromatography. It is holding on there without any kind of a problem. Pen flush is starting to break down some of that blue. You see it much lighter in there, and the one-third bleach solution is completely removing it. But, as is the case generally with Sailor Inks, it only took water to get this out of my pen. 
The next writing sample is done on life paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some very nice shading, over going lighter to darker, quick goes dark to light to dark, brown goes dark to light, so nice. Fox goes dark to light, 12 seconds to dry, medium is darker than the extra fine, lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does show spots of shading. Brown goes darker to lighter at the W, darker at the N. Not too bad. Dog starts a little lighter and then gets darker. Over starts a little lighter and then gets darker. I think the cream color of the paper is helping to bring out some more of this shading. The scrubby for both don't really show much for color variation, but it does show itself in the writing, and the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Sailor's Riku Cha has a viscosity of 2.32, making it normal. If you're interested in how the viscosity tests and all of that stuff is done, then there's a link to that video down in the description. Now let's take a look at the next writing sample done on G Lalo paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen. It's showing some shading like the H in the, the K in quick, the BR in brown, X in fox. It is still coming through very nicely on this gray paper, nine seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, not as dark as the stub. No feather spread, halo sheen, no shading, 11 seconds to dry. Scrubbies are showing no color variation, though we get it in the extra fine, not in the medium. And the smear test, I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Sailor's Riku Cha has an average dry time of 17 seconds, making it not just normal, but average. The last writing sample is done on Franklin Christoph paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it does still shade. Brown starts darker, gets lighter. Quick goes darker to lighter to darker. Over goes lighter to darker. The is very dark and eight seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does offer spots of shading. The middle of quick is a little bit lighter than the rest of the word. Over starts slightly lighter and then gets darker. Nine seconds to dry. The scrubbies still not showing any color variation when we do get it in the extra fine. And the smear test, you still could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Sailor's Riku Cha, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a nice green ink from Diatramentis because of the green lean in this ink. I went with Edgar Allan Poe or Emerald Green. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those videos. So what do I think of Sailor's Riku Cha? This is such a cool, green-leaning brown. I don't mean cool as in tone. I mean, it's really cool to look at. Man, I like it. I'm in lust for a bottle. Yeah. How many bottles of brown inks does one man need? One more. I think that says it all. Oh, it also shades very nicely. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? Personally, I don't want the very dark tone that you would get from a wet pen. I do want to bring out some of that shading, and with that, I would prefer to use a medium to dry flow, medium or fine nib. Although, I do think a medium flow broad will put down a great tone with very nice shading. Just depends on that particular broad nib. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Mont Blanc's Daniel Defoe. No relation to William.